Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline. Welcome to Midnight Mandela. It was very slow connecting. I, I know you might have seen me moving my head strangely, trying to figure out what's going on. So, Jacqui is uh, noticing all my Mandelas for the last five years, apparently just showing up for her. And one is the uh, outfits of the... Orthodox Jewish uh, definitely have taken on a different look for me. <laughs> she said they used to just wear tall hats. Yeah, I know. There's like the weird square thing and then the hair and then, yeah, there's, there's it's just different. It's different. Uh, some of that stuff, the some of the Burj um Dubai stuff and the Burj Khalifa and stuff. I, I haven't been totally tracking it all, and I almost did have some more. But you know what? I've just, I have so many Mandela's, and I haven't even caught up on the comments. And um, it's like, I got to pick my battles right now. <laughs> so, I mean, there was a while ago that I could not find man that many Mandela's, but now I am almost like um, overload. Yeah, the giraffes look so different now. Just kind of going through this. We're trying to go through it really quick. America's bending. Yes, kind of like this. Well, actually, no. It, it's bending like that on the bottom. But on the top, it's... The um, Great Lakes are like sinking down in, and then on the side, uh, Vancouver is taking a big bite out of the western, northwestern seaboard. Yeah, the Coke logo is an older one. I don't, I don't think it's changed lately for me, but so it got like all like. For me, it didn't used to be two levels. It used to just be on one level. And then it got curly, like kind of weirdly wavy. Let's see what it looks like now. Yeah, the Coca-Cola is like a classic. It hasn't changed a lot for me lately. So, uh, you know what? Yeah, it's still two level. Because this, this thing, the C swirled under there. Uh, and that dash used to be lower. And this curly Q didn't used to go under there. And, um, that's some of the more recent ones. My gosh, I can't even really totally remember what it used to look like. It's been this way for like six or seven years for me now. So, but yeah, it didn't used to be two levels for sure, for sure. Yeah, the C is, that's been, that was years ago when I saw, when we first noticed that one. At least most of us, who knows what timeline people are here. We had a very bad rain and storm. Oh, you had the green skies. Now, last I checked, the green skies were said to be before tornadoes. So I'm glad you didn't get one. Green skies. So, yeah, they definitely have this weird thing now where the storms come in like in a giant blob. A super creepy blob like the devil himself is... Riding, oh, green. Dubai sky turns green as heavy rains hit. I have not heard of. So you're in Dubai again. You know, Dubai is shifty McShifties. So what, it was just green for a tiny. Okay, I'm assuming this is sped up. Let's just get, get a good view of it. Yeah, okay, so that sped up. So what, it was green for like 10 minutes or something? That's weird, though. Do you guys get tornadoes? I have not heard of tornadoes over there. Uh, the green skies are due to tons of hail and water droplets. Come on! <laughs> it scatters the red and yellow lights from the sun, making the sky look green. This is totally <laughs> Oh, I'm so tired of the... I feel like the whole reality is just gaslighting me all the time. Oh, oh no, it's climate change. I don't... Oh my god, so... Uh, green skies are, of course, totally normal. 
Uh, now this person convinces that convinced they're messing with the weather. Somebody else swears it's climate change. We're like, no, it's a Mandela. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's have a... Oh, ooh, you got a lot of storms going on. Biggest flood since 1999. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys weather it okay. Pardon the pun. Oh, my goodness. Did you see this Dubai sky turning green? That's some next level stuff. So, let's see. Sky turns... Let's see what the latest storyline is on that. Sky turns green. Last I checked, those showed up a couple of years, maybe, uh, you know, I think even maybe before the pandemic, the skies were turning green, but they said it was before a thunderstorm, and then they never really... Or not a thunderstorm, they said before tornadoes, and they didn't really explain, like, exactly why it would be green before tornadoes. Okay, so now it's during thunderstorms due to the phenomena called light scattering. Of course it is. Scattered in all directions by gases and particles. The clouds carry a lot of water, which allows primarily blue light to pass through the storm. The blue light mixes with the sun's red light. Wait, doesn't that make sense? I mean, the blue light mixes with the sun's red light, but... All of the light is from the sun. The blue light would be from the sun, too. And if all of that water was blocking the red light, then how did the red light get through to me? See what I'm saying? They're acting like the blue light is not from the sun's... I don't know. The green hue is more likely to occur when the storm happens later in the day as the sun's position and the sky drops lower, changing the spectrum of light blue to more red. The exact reason why green skies occur is still not fully understood, but the water droplets in the storm cloud play a significant role. Okay, it used to be tornadoes, but now it's thunderstorms. Of course it is. I wonder if it still says it on my old videos that it was tornadoes. Mm, no, no. See, I wrote tornadoes again. <laughs> Green skies, not tornadoes. Uh. So today's has been one of those days where I was trying to prepare and there's a million Mandela's in the comments and I'm trying to chase them down. And then I hadn't found anybody in my backstage chat for like weeks. So I bopped in there. And of course, today is the day people were in there and they had a whole bunch of Mandela's, especially Bill had all these Mandela's to tell me about. And so then I was chasing his Mandela's. I don't first, I gotta change my seating here. Sometimes I don't know why I just have to put my left foot underneath my leg, my other leg. So probably not ideal behavior for a show, but there you go. I had to do it when I gotta do it. Actually, it's kind of weird because like, why do I suddenly just feel like I have to do that? But always been that way let's see the okay blah 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 covered that i've totally lost my chain of <laughs> i'm like Psh. okay here we go let's get back to earth here all right so we got green skies now i did some quite some years ago like six or seven years maybe five or six it was a little before the pandemic there was a really not even a bad storm, but a weird storm kind of towards the end of the day. And the sky turned really purple, like purple pink. And that was pretty bizarre. And that was the first one. And then the, the green skies before tornadoes showed. So now we're at green skies for storms. Jacques has the southern lights. Yeah, so the southern, the northern lights are coming all the way down to the top of California now. That's crazy time. All right, flickery skies. Oh, you had that also. Okay, now I would assume that this is lightning. It looks like it's lightning flickers. 
turn off the sound. Now this looks like normal speed. Now I'm looking at these vehicles crawling along and the lights flickering on. So this is now, that's a heck of a lot of lightning though. If that's lightning, is it lightning? Well, I'm glad you still have power. Jeez. That's sort of like, what is that place that showed up some years ago that has like lightning ev almost every day of the year? Hundreds and hundreds of strikes. I forgot the name of it now. It looks like that. Uh-oh, airport flooded. Well, that kind of sucks. Hopefully everybody's going to be all right. It does. It looks like it's lightning, though. Wow, that is a lot of lightning. And it's kind of, is it really that purpley? So we covered the colored lightnings now, since they're not just white, they come in different colors. That's a ton of lightning. I haven't heard of any major damage though yet. Hopefully there won't be. Oh, Amon had 19 deaths. Not good. Dubai rain is a rare sight. All right, well, dang, that is a lot. You know, nobody's saying what that flickering was. I mean, I'm going to assume it's lightning, but I'd really like to have official word before I completely settle on that. <laughs> yes, so oh, the southern lights. Okay. Yeah, when did I first hear of that? Like eight or nine years ago. So it used to be northern lights only. Yes. That is an old Mandela from eight or nine years ago. And the southern lights showed up. Yep. It is a Mandela, though. I don't know how many people remember that Mandela. It's called Shine. It's called Shine. You mean all that flickering? Is it really called that? Or are you messing with me? I saw that much lightning at once when I was in Manitoba. The JFK. Okay, so what the JFK car has a giant wheel on the back. JFK car. See, there's the front. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. So it's not like it's it's under there then, I guess. Yeah, I don't remember that. It's weird because it's just like this big black image. So when I was looking, I swear I could not. I looked at the Zapruder film. Oh, look. Okay, you can kind of see it there. That's weird because I did look at the Zapruder film and I didn't see this like last week. I'm, now I'm kind of wondering because it's really obvious. I was going to say, oh, well, you can't really see it in the Zapruder film, but this is the Zapruder film and it's right here. And I ran it like five times going, I don't see no wheel, but it's right there. So what in the heck? Oh, it's been a weird week. I, I, it's been a weird day. It's been a weird everything. Okay, so yes, there is a giant wheel. I am I know this sounds delusional, but I'm really not sure that was there last week when you said it was there and I looked. I could not find it. Uh, these kind of things. There's just too many of them now. All right, Shari saw it in 2017. I think I might have just saw it for the first time right now, frankly. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's getting weird like that. Like, things are just getting so shifty. Even just stuff from, 
like yeah, jets and sprites. So I've had those on. Noiseless lightning. Noiseless lightning. Did I just show up in this timeline? Because I don't remember noiseless lightning. All right, I'll put this on. There's going to be a lot of Mandela's in today. All right. Um, big wheel. So what is that car anyway? Is it a Lincoln Continental? The Lincoln Continental. Presidential limousine. It still has the three seats, though, right? Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't I just look at this? All right. I don't think that's the one he got killed in. All right. Here. All right, one row, two. So there's still the three rows. A lot of people only remember two rows, including myself. The fake little weirdo windows. What is this business? Uh, you know, this whole thing here looks like it's different now. This weird metal whatever. I, I'm trying to remember what was there before, and I don't remember that. That's one thing I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember this. Oh, I don't remember these weird square things either. I mean, I'm assuming they're there for, like, people to grab on. So I was watching the Zapruder film, like, a little while ago when I was trying to see for this wheel thing. And so not only does Jackie climb way out the back, but now, like, one of these guys jumps up onto this and kind of climbs forward. And that wasn't a thing before. I should probably go look at the Zapruder film again so you can see what I mean. It'd probably be different from when I looked at it before. All right, film. Videos. All right, just give me the plain old film. You know, it's weird. I think I looked at this remastered one and it sucked more than ones that weren't remastered. The other thing I noticed is there's this weird stuff, stuff, whatever. It wasn't on the side for me. It's this. I have, I have never seen this white stuff. Now, way back, the Zapruder was black and white for me. Then they said they changed it to color. Now it's always been color. Um, I've watched like a bunch of versions way back the Zapruder film, for me, showed an image from this side of the the vehicle, too. And then so suddenly it changed to this side. It's been that way for a while. Now there's this big stupid sign that's in the way that you can't see. That sign was smaller to me last time I looked at it than it is now. To see the president. Uh, I'm going to turn off the audio. All right. So... I don't know what's up with this. I've seen so many times these videos. I have never seen these things, whatever they even are. Um, probably some of you are like, oh, that's blah, 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 of course. So now this stupid sign, it was tiny before, but now it's huge, and these things showed up. And the last time I looked at it, this was smaller, and originally was not there at all, like a couple years ago. Now it totally obscures so much. That weird black flash wasn't there. You can't see much of the car now, too. Like, before, you could see all the way down here, and it was much better done. Like, look, most of the effing car is not even visible. That wasn't... Like, the, the cameraman did a lot better job. All right, so Mary gets hit. I hope I don't get in trouble for showing this, actually. All right, she climbs way in the back. Now, see, he jumps up and, and like, 
he's on the car now and that wasn't the case last time so this has been sneaking up because she would get on the car a little bit then she get on the car more and now she gets now she grabs his hand now bef last time i looked she just kind of flailed around with one hand but now she's grabbing his hand he's climbing up on the car they got grabby things for him to climb up on the car all these bushes weren't there before that are blocking the view there's like a ton of crap in the way. What is this black thing here coming up? Uh, yeah, that all just wasn't like that. I don't know what's going on with all that, but it's garbagey now. All right, so. Gonna <coughs> sneeze, excuse me. <sighs> Almost got to do it now. All right, I'm good. Um. One of the reasons I just worried about showing that is that I just remembered that there is a rule that you're not supposed to show unliving situations on YouTube these days. However, this is on YouTube also, so <laughs> I don't know. They got away with it. Maybe they're making exceptions for certain old famous things. Why? Suddenly I've got allergies. Oh, that was weird. I haven't had allergies in so long. All right. I don't know. I'm allergic to Zaprooter, apparently. So, yeah, it's a uh, Lincoln Town Car is what they said, right? JFK Car is a... I think it was a Lincoln Town Car before, but I don't remember it looking like that, so... Oh, yeah, you're right. It was a Lincoln Town Car. So it's a Lincoln Continental now. You're right. It was a Lincoln Town Car. Car is now a Lincoln Continental. Okay. Ah, so you guys have cracked the code. Jacqui noticed that something was different. Uh, somebody else noticed that it wasn't a Lincoln Town Car. Refers to the 61 Lincoln Continental used by President JFK. It was a totally a town car. You're right. It was totally a town car. Yet it looks similar than I remember, except for that. Let's see. Let's look at what a Lincoln town car. Or was the Lincoln town car the two-seat one? Maybe that's what it was. Let's see. Lincoln town car. With, uh, what do you call it? So, yeah, see, it looks like the Lincoln Town Car was the two-seat. But I know it was open air. So what is it like? What do you call that? Um, convertible? Okay, so Lincoln Town Car, was that like the original one before it became three seats? None of them really look right. This one kind of looks right. For the original before it became three seat. Ooh, that's tight, see? I don't know. You guys help me out with this. I'm not good at cars. All right, we didn't do the noiseless lightning. That's coming. What, rock the Casbah is now rocking the Casbah? No. <laughs> I'll have to look at that separately because I can't play originals on here because I'll get a copyright. I know it was rock the Casbah, though. I know it was rock the Casbah. So if you want to... um. You can get like a cover and then play the cover, a little bit of the cover, but you really can't play the original uh, song on here, like the original copyrighted song. I saw an MIB superimposed over the film a few years ago by slowing down the frames. Huh. What are the white squares? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Is there a... 
Rocking the cash. Oh, cash ball. No, but rock the cash ball was not rocking the cash ball. So you're saying it's cash ball. Rock the cash ball. The cash ball. All right, I'll have to look that up. I mean, those are too close, so it, it's... I mean, I'm not saying they don't change, but it's harder to make a case for it when they're really close like that. Even if you know, you know, but still. But it wasn't rocking the Casbah. That's the thing that got me. So, rocking the cash ball. I'm going to have to look at that. Yeah, there was no rocking. So, they're going to have multiple versions stuck together now. All right, it was always the rule that thunder came before lightning. You would hear, wait a minute, that's not right. Not for me. It was always you would see the lightning, then the thunder, because lightning traveled faster than sound for me. So it was definitely always th a lightning, then thunder. Oh, okay, so the noiseless lightning. I think I did have this on. The story was that it was too far away for the sound to get there or some kind of yammer, which makes no sense to me, but I think I did have that on. Je Jewish people wear cake for hats now. I know, I know, I had that on, that giant thingy, and it gets bigger. Like, it's been a while since I had it on, but the, the furry hat thing, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like the furry hat things uh, for the UK um, that used to be called beef eaters, but now they have another name and the beef eaters or something. But the, the furry hat guys, which once were called beef eaters, but now never have been. I'm going crazy. All right. So let's get that one off of there. And we'll get that one off of there. And we'll get that one. We got that one. All right. So speaking of covers, all right. This song, <laughs> there's an interesting change for me. And I have not run this by anybody. So I don't know if I'm the only crazy people that a person that remembers what I cannot even find evidence, but I know it was a certain way. And it's this things we do for love. Now, this is a cover. So these are just regular people, and it sounds kind of bad. But hopefully I won't get a copyright strike, so that's why we're having this cover on. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I have it set up so you can hear. Yes, looks like it's good. All right, so hopefully you can hear this. Let me play it, I'll play it a little bit loud. Like walking in the rain and the snow and there's no way to go and you're feeling like a part of you is dying and you're looking for the answer in All right so you're going it's funny cuz it's 400 444 minutes that's my that's my uh number that I always see okay so you're looking for the answer in what is what do they say next you feel like you're dying. You're looking for the answer in. What is the next bit of lyric that goes on there? So I'm really curious if anybody remembers it the way I remember it. And then I'll play that really bad sound. So there's been a lot of changes in the songs. A lot of them is like the to all and, and like littler things. And so I've, I've kind of ignored a lot of them because a lot of them are, are minus or kind of minor. There's a reason I'm going to include this one. First of all, I'm absolutely positive that it was a certain way. The way they used to say it, it was interesting to me. And that's part of the reason I remembered it. But now it is especially interesting giving what I will describe shortly.
It's interesting if nobody remembers it too, though. The rain and the sun, na 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 na. Looking for the answer in. Ah, it may be that nobody remembers. Okay, you remember in her eyes, looking for the answer in her eyes. Definitely not what Joe Bloor said. The sky. Her eyes. Two people have never heard the song before. It is a little old, but if you're like in your 50s, you probably would have heard this when you were young. I, it's actually kind of old, but they used to still play it when I was young. And I still hear it occasionally on the radio. It's just, it's not like a top song, but it comes on. Uh, okay, nobody remembers what I remember. I totally remember... And it sounds really good with it, is looking for the answers in Orion. Looking for the answer in Orion. And I used to be like Orion, like you look up and you're looking. So somebody said the skies, which is interesting. Looking for the answer in the skies, which is like Orion. But it like, it feels like you're dying is the lyric looking for the answer in Orion. So it rhymes really nice. And I always kind of, while well, I'm like, looking for the answer in Orion is kind of a little bit of a stretch, but hey, it rhymes great with dying, right? Orion, what rhymes with dying? Well, Orion does. But see, it made sense where I came from because Orion was up there. We weren't in it. Like we're in Orion now. We used to be in Sag, Sagittarius, and Orion was out there. But I think it had to change because looking for the answer in Orion would be looking for the answer right here. And that doesn't really work. So so now that I'll go back and you can hear while they do it now. But. And you're feeling like a part of you is dying. And you're looking for the answer in your eyes. Your eyes. You think you want. So for me, it's looking for the answer in Orion. Dying and Orion. Okay, so it might be that I'm the only one who remembers. Fortunately, there's no Orion people. Maybe it wasn't even in some people's timelines. But since Rebecca remembers in the skies, dying skies, eyes, skies... So what, Joe Blow, you didn't think it was her eyes? Let's see. Let's see. That song, Cheap Trick. I want you to want me. I need you to need me. I beg you to beg me. Ah, I don't remember what the next one is. <laughs> Actually, that's I don't remember for sure what the next one is. I think I'd remember if the next one was a totally strange one. But, okay. It's cheap trick lyrics. Do you want me? Let's see. I need you to need me. I love you to love me. I'm begging you to beg me. No, I don't think it was begging. It was, I beg you to beg me. Love you to love me. All right, no. It was, I beg you to beg me. I'm begging you to beg me. No, that's not. No, it was not an end for me. It just followed with the rest of the thing. None of the other ones added an ING on there. So, is that the change? Because that's the change I see. No, 
Nope, nobody heard answer in Ryan. So I'm so disappointed nobody remembers because it was like, it's such a perfect Mandela because we're not, now we're in Orion. So actually that is weird. The answer's in Orion, now we're in it. Oh my God, now that I think about it, it's even more weird. It's more weird. So all I knew when I first heard it is like, hey, it used to say Orion, but then I thought about it. I'm like, yeah. it's been a weird week, okay? Because I saw this one like, I don't know, five, six days ago. And then a couple days ago, I went to, like, I've been getting up earlier and getting, you know, sort of into human hours and getting out in the daytime. And so I went, lately, like, shopping is so boring because everything is garbage. But I do like to go to the thrift stores because you never know what neat old thing you'll find or just some cool, wacky thing. And then if I don't find anything, that's fine, right? It just because you don't need to spend money. But if I do find something, it's usually only a couple bucks. So that's also neat. Um, so I was like bopping around in Goodwill and like there was sort of a, a kind of a dude acting a little strange. And we do have a lot of homeless around. So I was kind of cautious because it was like a guy and he was kind of younger and he was, you know, like kind of tall and a little bit muscular and you don't want like trouble, right? And so... Um, so he was like, looked like he was trying to catch my eye and I'm like, you know, I'm doing the New York LA thing. Like don't make eye contact. And uh, then I ran into him later in the store and he kind of a little bit jumped in front of me, but not exactly. And I was sort of like, what is this guy going to do? And then he was like stuttering. So I actually don't think he was like a bad guy. I kind of got a vibe with after a while and I realized he's probably just, he's got some kind of mental problem, but I didn't get like, I got kindness vibes. I don't think he was a bad guy, but, but he was like all stuttering and he was like trying to say like, do you know where? And he took like a long time and I was just sort of like, I hadn't really made up my mind on the situation yet. So I was sort of just like trying to be minimal, you know? And, uh, and he asked me, do you know where we are in Orion? That's what he asked me. And I was like, no. <laughs> Because I don't know where we are. And then I just, I don't know, I just kind of left. I was just like, I don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> but I thought, I'm like, that's a pretty weird thing to ask. Who just randomly asks, do you know where we are in Orion? Um, after this Mandela. So it's been a weird week, you know. And then later I was going through Goodwill thinking about what that guy said. And I'm like, I, I kind of went around the store and I'm like, is he still in here? And he was trying to talk with another family or something. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I might have, should I have gone back and go, what do you mean? Where are we in Orion? They found a minotaur statue in Patagonia. Oh, that's interesting. Because, you know, they... Didn't they used to say that was just some written story? We're going to find out minotaurs are real. <laughs> Minotaur. Huge submerged minotaur statue in Cat Patagonia. Uh, 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 this does not look like the... What? No. Oh, so it's new. That does not look... Massive statue of submerged minotaur. What is going on here? Um, was discovered in Argentine Patagonia Lake with a gigantic mask. Meter and a half tall, weighs 250 kilos. So that's like 600 pounds maybe. It conceals its, its heart behind a padlock-like safe. Okay, so I think that's new, though. Somebody put some weird art down there. Composed of iron and cement. Yeah, that would be kind of a sucky thing to suddenly run into. Discovered an explanation... Indigenous peoples inhabit present-day South Central Chile. Within the Mapuche worldview, there's something called known as the Genko, Genko, 
a type of protecting force. Each part of nature has its own, so the Mapuche always ask permission before entering the lake. They want permission from the Genko. Another fighting was found. Another sculpture was a massive mask. Okay, I don't know. I'm like reading it, and I don't feel like that was an explanation at all. It looks pretty modern, but yeah, it is kind of weird. Yeah, waiting for the unicorns. I don't know if I want to see centaurs. Unicorns would be cool. No, I don't think I was getting gang stalked. I mean, like, I didn't feel any real... I kind of felt the threat at first just because it's, like, some weird dude. But then I didn't feel that was a bad person at all, actually. I felt actually kind of bad about be feeling bad towards that person because I think that was, like, a... like I don't know. He had a... Uh, he emanated kind of a niceness. It was weird, though. It was weird, but I didn't feel like I was stalked at all. I mean, around here... There's all, I mean, it's not L.A., but it's not like the world's nicest neighborhood all the time anymore. Yeah, there's tons of new archaeological stuff. I could go on forever. Yeah, it's hear what you want was interesting, but I'm quite sure one of the reasons I, I'm quite positive was answer in Orion. There's some of them that are very hear what you want, but eyes and Orion are different enough that I don't think I'm going to hear one versus the other. Plus, I wasn't even paying any attention, and the song him, I'm like, where did Orion go? And then I listened to the whole song to make sure it wasn't hidden in one of the refrains. I checked the lyrics. There's never been Orion. U.S. stepped up its game with a big futuristic plan, a moon railway system. The U.S., with the help of DARPA and Northrop Grumman, is making it happen. A moon railway system... Ah, uh, I don't know if you heard, did I cover it? That I think that was last week I covered it. They, they're going to put, uh, they need time zones on the moon. So, <laughs> moon railway system. Uh, maybe we'll have one big shift and it'll have always been up there. The lunar, has, as also known as lunar railroad or moon train. Okay, so they're developing a concept. So it's early, early stages, at least right now. All right. All right, so we, we've done the soundless lightning in the past, so I, I think I've already covered that one, then I thought about it. Okay, so this one was weird. It's like a, what year was this? This one Bill found, and it's a... Um, It was like 1776, I believe, is this beast. Let me look at it. Yeah, here we go. Uh, 1774, boy robot. I think I even wrote it down. Because I was just being told these like a half hour before the show. But yeah, Bill found this. So in 1774, they had this robot. It was... I don't even get exactly how they got power to it because I don't see a crank but it it was not battery operated either so I'm wondering if they kind of have a low a spring load where you kind of wind up the spring and then it goes so this boy could be programmed to uh with there was a kind of a disc thing that would that was the programming and it it could be programmed to write in pen with um 
with whatever you wanted. So you say, I love you, mom. And it, and then they'd put the disc in for, I love you, mom. I would write it. But here's, this is the weirdest thing. The more I think about it, I'm like, back in those days, we didn't even have pens. You know, we didn't have regular pens. So the, the boy, and we had this robot, but we didn't have freaking pens. All right. When you think about it, it's pretty weird. So the boy would actually even turn over and he would dip his feather in the ink and then he would shake a little bit to get the extra ink off and then he would come back and write perfectly and like you'd think it'd be all crappy but no he and I, I guess they still have a functioning one of him which is this one um would write all perfectly like you could see that these fingers are kind of old and cracked um so this is probably an original the first modern printer um, the writer has written thousands of notes using a goose pill pen. So I, I would guess that they kind of just hide, like, the back. They would kind of cover it over so you wouldn't see it clacking. And there is, I guess, the... Somehow, maybe that's the disc. I don't know where they even put the disc in. It has 40 rotating cams that work like a read-only data storage, ROM data storage, mainly used to f store firmware. The wheel controlling the cams inside the doll is programmed, uh, is a programming system disk made up of letters that can be removed, replaced, and reordered to make any word or sentence follow allowing this 250-year-old writer to be programmed like a robot. Now, I believe that there is going to be... Um, so there's some of the programming. Let's open it up a little here. There's that part. All right, it's going to start writing. And its eyeballs even move to match what it's scribbling, which is extra creepy. So I guess it pulls. See, look, it, it's... <laughs> It's crazy town. So 1774, I think I said, right? Yeah, 1774. So it looks like it can do like multiple lines. And it's good, beautiful penmanship. I mean, it even dips the pen in the thing. I mean, like, we don't have pens, but we have robots. Ah, oh, I just, it just... Look at that dip. Oh, it kind of left off the part where it supposedly shakes, but shakes off the extra ink. So anyway, it's just crazy town. You know, in writing with those old um, feathers, my understanding was it was not easy to do. And I've never actually tried. Maybe one of these, uh, Lord knows I have enough feathers. I should try it one of these days. One of my old scungy broken ones. Looks like they had a little holder thing for feather. I don't even know anything about these old feather pens. Okay, so, yeah. Um, so they had other ones of these, apparently. They look like a little girl one. Then they would just... Uh, I don't know. It's just crazy town. Here's some other ones. I don't know what that one is. That one looks more modern. Okay, but anyway, I don't think they had that in 1774. They didn't even have pens, but they had boy robots. Okay, this was another one. 1810. Dresden's first robot in history. Dresden's. Why are we doing Dresden? So, that one was 1774, but somehow this 1810 one was the first robot. Um, Friedrich Kaufman of Dresden... So this one apparently, like, would play the trumpet, I think that is. Trumpeteer had leather bellows for lungs and reeds. I know we've seen some of these weird ones before, but... S 
<laughs> A chess playing robot from the 1700s. Did it play? The did chess it win? Turk also. Gotta watch that sound. All right, do we have the robots? Okay, it looks like they just have somebody hidden in there. No, this is magic tricks. This might be the chess playing robot. All right, it does not look like we get to watch it go. Uncan you know, Uncanny Valley, I... That concept, I've only really only heard that for like the last year or so. So, um, Uncanny Valley, this kind of describes it, but it's like, if something is close to human but not human, there's a point where it starts to get creepy because it's too close to human. And then if it starts to get exactly like a human, then it's not creepy anymore, apparently. That's the concept of Uncanny Valley. Like, it doesn't disturb you to look at it. I don't know what's going on. I mean, like, I can't run this guy's whole thing because, um, so it looks like this one, there's nobody hidden in there, right? I don't know. The chess Turk explained. I think the guy inside the box who beat all those people is more impressive. Okay, so yeah, it looks like that one does cover, like there's a guy hidden in the box. That is sneaky. This Orion place is technologically more advanced, but spiritually stunned. It does look like that, but I do wonder if it's really more like everything that was like hidden down deep is out. So like all the stuff that you used to be in there, but people would just sort of keep it smooshed down, you know, like your dark side, right? Your shadow side, people would keep it smooshed down. And it may be that that's all coming up now. So you just see it. People now, if they have a bad thought, they're more likely to act on it or say it or whatever. They're just like letting it all out. Uh, so when it all comes out and you're acting it out, it's easier to see. And the advantage is you see yourself doing it, you can change it more better, right? You, you can say, okay, I'm doing this, I'm like yelling and it's rude. I don't want to be like that. Why am I doing this? Um, so like all those thoughts come up. So it gives you the opportunity to deal with your shadow side. If you take the opportunity, if you don't, then the shadow side can just run rampant all the more because it's running the show more. Um, so I, that I think might be like what's going on. People have no self-control. They just do what they want. So I think people had more self-control. So a lot of stuff was hidden. But aren't we on the uh, Orion Spur now, right? We're on Orion Spur, so we're on Orion. And that's it. There's no more Orion. It's just Orion Spur. The Orion Spur is where we are now. Or local arm. It's a minor spiral arm of the Milky Way. Now, a lot of people remember that we were on Sagittarius before. But Orion Spur is situated between Sagittarius and Perseus Arm. The other thing is most people, like a lot of people remember us being way out on the edge of the Milky Way galaxy in the very far reaches. But now we're halfway in. So we would have been on the Sagittarius Arm like way out there. And now we're like in the middle of the Milky Way. And the Milky Way now has a, has a bar galaxy. And I don't remember it being a bar galaxy. I just remember it being a circle thing in the middle. But now it has this bar in the middle, which is a totally different galaxy from the one I remember. <laughs> so I don't know. And then all these weird names like Carina Sagittarius and Scutum Centaurus Arms and Norma Arm and what? Yeah, what? Sorry, no. 
that stuff's been like coming and going and coming and going. So I was like looking at some of my old videos and I actually don't remember even covering um, mud volcanoes that explode. Did I cover that and I forgot? I remember covering mud volcanoes, but I didn't remember covering that explode in flames. So this old event happened in 2021. Rare mud volcano explodes into towering inferno in Caspian Sea. And um, I don't really remember covering this. A towering inferno hundreds of feet tall burning above the Caspian Sea on Sunday um, after a massive explosion in Azerbaijan's oil and gas fields. The culprit, a mud volcano. Local authorities initially suspected an accident in one of the multiple oil and gas rigs in the area, but the state oil company Socar later announced that preliminary investigations had deemed the cause of the explosion to be a mud volcano and that none of its platforms had been damaged. So they're basically saying, okay, so mud volcanoes are a rare type of volcano that erupt a superheated slurry of mud and water instead of lava, which means they don't get as hot as regular volcanoes. However, they also contain high concentrations of natural gases that build up inside of them, which can be ignited by sparks created by fast-moving rocks and boulders beneath the surface during eruptions. This is believed to be what caused the recent inferno in the Gaspian Sea. See, I mean, I it says I covered this, but I don't remember, like, the threat. Like, I've heard of these mud volcanoes in the recent years where mud bubbles up and people sit in there and it's, like, supposed to be a spa treatment or something and there are stinky sulfur smells. But now there's, like, a risk of getting blown up, apparently, because there's who knows what gases and there might be rocks tumbling around deep inside that somehow make a spark even though they're under mud they made a spark and then the whole thing blows up so you're going to be sitting in one of these spa treatments and the whole thing goes boosh i mean like are you sure you want to sit in there azerbaijan has 400 of the 1000 mud volcanoes on earth which along with its abundance of oil and gas reserves has earned the country the name Land of Fire. The mud volcanoes in Azerbaijan are some of the biggest and most violent in the world. There are on average several large mud volcano eruptions each year and many of them can have big fires. See, I don't remember covering that. So I'm like confused. I don't remember the Land of Fire and two or three giant volcano mud explosions a year did i cover that no so like the difference between no normal lavas like when they erupt it's it's hot lava right it's molten rock basically that comes out generally speaking but these are just mud like and sometimes the mud is not that hot so you can sit in it um but then like the gases erupt and the mud will splatter, but there's no hot lava. That's the difference. There's no hot lava, and it's not as hot. So once it's done erupting, there's no real danger. It just splatters mud everywhere, basically. And apparently fire, a fiery boosh. I don't know. This is crazy. Full of lava soap. <laughs> Let's see what this one is. Mystery link. Oh, yeah, this woman with her weird, um, she does really weird makeup, basically. Makeup professional. I saw those mud pools as a kid. Did you know that they explode with fiery explosions? Cashman Sea has never had volcanoes. Yeah, well, they do now. They're the land of fire. All right, well, two explosions a year, and they got, what, 600 of the things? Okay, so anyway, yes, but apparently I covered it, according to my old show. And it was some years ago. So I was looking at Darth Vader, and we just did Darth Vader. 
was like a week or two ago. And I'm looking at the nose, and I don't remember that nose. Now, Jacqui said something on comments about Darth Vader changed again. So I don't know which change she saw, but I don't remember Darth Vader having a bumpy nose. It's like this now. It's all scaly, and it definitely was not all scaly for me la last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was I looked at it. So I'm going, no. And this is, I looked at all different images of them, and all of them have it. Like, I don't see any, even the newer ones have it. So that's like a new change. Now, last time I covered this weird neck thing that flares out weird, um, but now he has bumpy nose. So there's another one. I, there's probably a hundred other things that have changed, but I didn't have time to look at them all. So we're at Darth Vader's, Vader's bumpy nose. Black mango. Black mango. Everything is going to be in every cover color. Okay. Doesn't look very good. Okay, once they open it, it looks better. Huh. I don't know. Black mangoes. Why not? Yeah, the red eyes thing. Wait, let's get rid of the mango. So I had that on years ago, and it's a little bit less subtle than it was, but I did have that on many years ago. The red eyes. Yeah, so it's going to be, it's not, <laughs> I don't believe you when it says, so like everybody remembers for newbies that it, he said, um, what was the man talking? <laughs> so like uh, he, everybody remembers Luke I am your father but now it's no I am your father I'm like waiting till we get to the timeline where he goes nah -uh. <laughs> some people now remember no Luke I am your father but it is last I checked it is no I am your father Yeah, the cod piece wasn't there originally on Darth for me either, but it's been there a while. Bestiality changed to bestiality, really? Bestiality? No, it was bestiality. Like the beasts. The best, it's actually creepy change. What is bestiality? No, that is not. I don't think I like that change. What is B? Okay, this one still has it. Why do people use zoo file instead of bestialist? Urban dictionary. Common way to misspell bestiality. Uh, so it's a misspelling now, hmm? Although this one doesn't think it's a misspelling. Law Insider. Huh. Well, a lot of misspellings, but yeah. No, I don't remember that. I've never heard of bestiality. That's creepy. Stonefish. I've had those on. Let's see where we're at with them. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I did not use that for the thumbnail. Oh, is that even real? Is that even real? It's real, right? Because they could have just, it could be fake. Can't tell these days. <laughs> it does look fairly real, I have to say. All right. That would have made such a good thumbnail. Maybe I'll have to steal it for next week. Um, typical Twitter, like the comments below have nothing to do with the original one. Huh. I'm going to have to look into that one. That one's interesting. Purple stonefish. Purple stonefish base. 
see if I can find it. Uh, does not look good. Let's try just stonefish face. Well, okay, it looks like they might have that look from below. That one looks pretty creepy. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's interesting because there's no, there's no way to track it. There's no info on it. But, you know, that's how a lot of the Mandela's show up, so... Yeah, see, I don't want the word best to be used with bestiality. Thank you. Okay, that blue-tailed lizard has been on, Jackie, and there's a long story because we have those blue-tailed skinks here, and um, there is a huge weird story for me with those. I've had this story on before, but basically when I first moved to my current location in San Diego, occasionally out in the yard, we have like kind of a big yard, it's a couple acres, because it's rural, right? And um, I would, there was a, a like a... I would find a thing, okay? I would find a wiggly thing. Like I'd move a plant and this wiggly thing would wiggle out and it was bright turquoise. Like I would think it was a piece of garbage at first because it didn't look good, like anything had that color naturally. It was so bright it looked like, like you know when the bright turquoise lids of, of drinks or something? I, but then it would be moving and I'm like, Ugh. my brain is telling me it has to be garbage, but it's moving and it was a... um. It, I kind of thought it was like a worm, but it moved like a lizard, but it had no legs. Okay, now I saw one hold still for a while, and then I saw a move and then hold still, and my dog ate like half of one once, and I saw the other half. It never had legs. It was just this bright, ridiculous, bright blue thing. And I looked on Google like so many times for those, and I could never find them. And then years later... I looked again, and all I could find were the skink. Now, the skink didn't show up, the you know, 20 years ago when I was looking for it. So it's almost like it showed up tail only at first. And the whole thing was blue, but it was all a tail. It was like it started with the tail. I know this sounds ridiculous, but it started with the tail. The tail grew at my house. We had tails, but we didn't have the body yet. So now the whole body is there, and just the tail is, is this color. It's the same color blue-tailed skink so it's just par for the week that you would bring this up because it has been a creepy mandala for me these blue-tailed skinks because I swear to god they started with the tail I don't know how to say it's only my yard but I saw them just be tails in my yard and I was trying to figure it out for years like I would a few years would pass I'd see another one maybe I'd see two or three that one summer then I wouldn't see any for a few years and I, every time I'd see them again, I'm like, I want to figure out what these are because they're so amazingly bright. Now, a lot of things are bright like that now, but back then, no, that was like amazing. <sighs> so yeah, blue-tailed skinks. Don't get me started on blue-tailed skinks. T today's one of, oh, those things. Yeah, those are weird. I don't know if I can really play much of this. Let's see. I did see these. All right, no, no, we need to hear the thing. So you can play it up here, so you would actually have to have some skill, and then you squeeze the mouth. Yeah, I don't know, is it out of China or what? Otomaton, developed in, ja oh, out of Japan, known for its unique design, resembling an eighth note, accompanied by an endearing animated mouth. That's interesting you had that on because I just discovered those like a couple weeks ago myself. Because somebody I know bought another weird electronic uh, music toy.
the mouth is not endearing. I feel like it's creepy, but it's definitely not the creepiest thing in the timeline. Alright, so, Birth of Venus. Jacqui noticed, she mentioned she saw some changes. Now, I'm not sure exactly what changes, but she did mention this one that I remember the foot kind of being like, was it last week, two weeks ago? The foot was like on the edge of this shell, but now it's over the edge onto like totally out of the shell. So these shells, they kind of curl up like this. So she would be standing like on this part. But last time I was talking, I thought she was standing there. So now she's shifted to here. Uh, the other thing I noticed is she's really close to this one now. So she was sort of centered here, but now she's very, like this girl is now touching the hair. And I remember her space. I kind of looked at that. I'm like, okay, look at the spacing. I don't know why. I just thought of, I'm going to look at the spacing. And I did look at the spacing. And this one was not touching the hair. It wasn't in the, the range yet. Now, last time I talked about not remembering these flowers, this thing has changed a bunch of times. Um... The other thing I would say, like, another thing was this little bit of the cloth is looking weird now. And I don't remember it looking like, it looks like there's a solid part there or something. Um, it's just, I doubt if there's supposed to be. Now, one of the other people in the comments noticed that these, um, these wave things came up all the way under here. Now, I don't remember them being all the way up under there last time we talked about this one. Um, another person noticed that the face here is very red and we don't, I don't remember him being red when he was blowing last time. Um, the final thing two of us noticed on our own independently that there is another, you know, pornographic body part showing here now with this weird claw thing. And that I'm quite sure was not, it was just her. There wasn't two of them. So we have more nudity now. Um, and those are the changes I noticed from like two weeks ago. I actually don't really remember like the flowers I do remember, but they look like they're like barnacles on the wing now too. So I actually don't remember the barnacles on the wing uh, that are, I guess, flowers. But, um, and I actually don't remember her hair going up this high, but I would not swear on the hair and I would not swear on the barnacle flowers uh, I just realized there's some white stuff here too. Like we were commenting last time that the wings were black, but there's now something here under the wings that's kind of whitish. And I don't even know what that is actually. Um, but the, the new, the new body part is definitely one I would a hundred percent say is not there because when I looked at it, I'm like, what's up with that? And then I looked at the comments and somebody else had commented the same. I also really agree on the face not being red before. And I really agree on the foot not being all the way out of the shell um, than last time. And I'm quite positive on this, although I'm the only one who said anything about that. But So anyway, yeah, new changes. I kind of feel like some of these flowers look a little bit different. But again, I wouldn't swear to it. I don't know if you guys see anything else that's changed recently. Yeah, see, because sh the center girl has shifted over on the shell, and the other one hasn't moved, so. Her face is red now, too. Let's see. Mm. I'm not sure on the face. I kind of suck on faces. I can do colors. I'm pretty good on colors. I'm not sure if she was always this pudgy either, actually, now that I'm looking at it. She looks like she has really pudgy around here. Are in it. Oh, you know what? That is another thing. Yes. Yes. I did think of that earlier. I totally forgot. And now you brought it up. The same thing. What is this girl's legs doing? Like, it doesn't look doable. Her, her body's turned that way, but a leg's out here. Another one's at the, this leg 
of the yeah i did notice that earlier but i forgot now so yeah double yeah now i'm not sure i'm not a hundred percent sure if i would have noticed that before because i didn't notice it just now but then i did notice it like what earlier today i think it was but i mean i'm not a hundred percent on that like some of the others but i did notice that and you did notice that Yeah, so the flowers I did notice a couple weeks ago, but I said they were new for me a couple weeks ago. I never heard of staircase design by Leonardo. Oh, I've never... Uh, did I see that before? Uh, I don't think I saw this. I've seen some weird ones, but I don't think I've seen this. Staircase design by Leonardo, 1516. I don't think I've seen this. Huh. Well, that's pretty weird looking. Somehow it gives me anxiety. Somehow the drawing isn't as bad as the real thing either. <laughs> when they got even the, like, the cutouts in the walls are the same. Dang. Yeah, no, I don't I don't think I've seen that. I'm trying to think back to every crazy spiral staircase I've seen, but I don't think I've seen that one. She got pregnant four days ago. <laughs> I think she's pregnant in her butt, though. <laughs> it's all back here. Oh, you know, you're right. There's a little stomach going on. Then the upper half is pretty thin. They actually give a flying F. Yeah, sort of. I don't think that even that position is right, though. See, I I remember her more like him, more like carrying her, but not her legs going all crazy like that. It was more of a regular carry. Uh, I think they know he designed it because it was in his. Uh, well, I've it's gone now, but it was in his notebook that he designed it. I guess I don't know. I didn't look that long, but. They showed a picture of his original drawing, so. Yeah, American Gothics change a lot, but it's like, I don't know, for a lot of us, they, it goes way back. So she was looking at this that I, it's not something I've noticed before. And I may, it may have been there a long time, but we all feel like the, the clothing have changed. Like, I don't remember this, like, business jacket. Actually, that might be a pretty new change, this business jacket. Actually, when did that business jacket show up? I don't think that was there, like, six months ago. That's for darn sure. But, uh, so what Jackie was noticing is that the... The pattern of the fork is actually like here in the clothing too. And see that goes down and it stops right there. And then this stops right at the hand. Um, yeah, I don't think he had a business jacket on. And a lot of people remember that one, this one being younger as like the daughter and looking straight ahead. And it was sort of creepy because they were both kind of staring forward like zombies um, I don't think this shed was there, or is it a barn? Um, that, I think, is new. It was just the house. The house was more over here. Um, actually, that looks new. It's been a while since I've looked at this thing. I don't think she had a strand escaped. There was no escaped hair strand before. Yeah, actually. Dang, I don't remember the pattern in the back of the top window. Oh, there's a, I don't remember this green stuff here. This thing has changed so much, though. 
Like, I can't even remember the old one. Now I'm just remembering the changes from the last time I saw it. Oh, I remember four forks way back, not just three. This looks like so sparse. Who even has a hay poker the three? It looks so spindly now. Uh, anyways, it's a little bit less creepy because they don't stare ahead like zombies, but... Strand of hair showed up a few weeks ago. Ah, oh, Shari, you're from a different timeline. So for me, it started with a daughter, and it's been the wife a long time, like a long time. So for you, it changed to the daughter, and now it's a flip off back to the wife. That's interesting. No, that's the wife, isn't it? That's the wife. It was definitely younger. See, she's got some wrinkle and stuff. I don't think that's the daughter. I guess it could be the daughter, but the one we remember was definitely younger looking. I kind of feel like he got older a little bit too, maybe. I wouldn't that's not one I'd swear to. But he does look a little more ragged. Yeah, so he used to have an ordinary, like I would call it ordinary, four-prong hay fork. I don't know, so is that the wife or the daughter? I want to say it's still too old for what it was, which I thought was the daughter. But with him older, then this could be the daughter. Ah, that's kind of a tricky one. I feel like before, though, it was obvious it was the daughter because the youngness was there. That That's not a wife. Nan told people that her brother envisioned the pair as father and daughter, not husband and wife. I'm quite positive that we were in the wife timeline before. So maybe it's kind of snuck as half and half. So before it was definitely the daughter though because the the person was quite young. I mean definitely I wouldn't be questioning before, now I am. So maybe it's kind of an amalgamation. All right, well we got to move on because there's a lot to cover. I only have a half hour. Okay, we did you. This thing, this thing was um Bill found these. It's a thousand finger bananas. They grow like this. There's like a thousand bananas. This is not fake. I did I did find some fake stuff when I was looking up bananas, but not these. These are legitimate bananas. Now, each one is kind of small. They're like big fat fingers. They're like this or something. But there'll be a thousand of them. I'm like, no. Now, Bill was freaked out about the red bananas because he didn't remember the red bananas. But I thought the red bananas and the blue bananas have been around a long time. Okay, so there's somebody, like, near the bananas. Of course, they're rather phallic. They're just the sign of the times. That's a different one. This one was, um... There's a different bananas. I forgot what they call I've never seen these before either, but they're, um... I forgot the name of them now. I think they were called like fan bananas or something but yeah um thousand finger bananas i don't think so and they're one of the cold tolerant ones too so theoretically i could probably grow these on the coast of san diego not right at my house but they could be grown on the coast because they can be grown in florida so this is the kind of banana i should be able to see around here Thousand finger bananas. So speaking of weird bananas, grow your own bananas, I guess. I'm going to have to look and see if there's any even more cold tolerant bananas because 
Uh, if they're going to make the bananas all creepy. I used to like bananas, but lately I'm all, mm, yeah, with whatever they're doing to them. Okay, so here we go. I want to leave time for this Ukraine thing. Shari remembers these since 2018. How do we only have 30 minutes left? I don't know, time. This week wasn't quite as bad as last week and the week before, but time, I swear, it gets faster and faster. So I just had Ukraine on and I was complaining about the Crimean Peninsula looking weird. And I swear it's like changed again. It's like changed from last week. So I don't, this has gotten even thicker here, this, this passage to Russia. And then this is broken up. It's like Russia is slurping it in and it's breaking off of the Ukraine. So that now the road over from Ukraine is like smaller and smaller. So it's called Crimean Peninsula. And for me, originally, it was very peninsular looking. And now it, you know, doesn't hardly even look like a Crimean Peninsula. Maybe it's going to become a peninsula of Russia. Um, but then I saw all this stuff. I'm like, what is all this? Islands and and in like strips and I'm like is it some kind of weird bridges what the hell is going on so I remember there being a bridge here and that's how Russia got on to Crimean Peninsula but now as you'll see now I had kind of assumed that there was a tiny little bridge in there but it turns out there's there's not and this confuses me because there's this road I think this is a road right is this a road or is it a river that it looks like there's a road that goes along here to here to here. So you would think that it would attach to Russia, but no, there's like, I guess you have to go over by ferry or something now and you'll see. So the first thing I'm like, what is this? What is this? And this is something that Bill really noticed. And I, sometimes I kind of notice stuff and then I'm like, well, I don't have time for that. And then Bill's like, what's that line? And I'm like, you're right. What's that line? So that's what happened today is Bill really pointed out this and he figured out the name is Arabat Spit. Arabat Spit. And and here is a close up of it. Okay. And this is how I know that there's no bridge here, I don't think. Or at least there's no land bridge. Um But the close up, I can't find any bridge in here so far. Maybe if I spent more time looking, but I really just was looking at this like twenty minutes before the show. So I didn't have much time to really hunt this down but I did hunt this down like I'm like all of this like who would make up a, a like a road there you know like <laughs> I don't know so I was like what is the Arabat spit um <laughs> it's funny because they starting to talk about tartars otherwise known as taters the Arabat spit um or Arabat Arrow is a barrier split that separates the large, shallow, salty Sivash lagoons from the Sea of Azov. I don't think that this thing was here even last week, this Arabat, Arabat spit. As I don't recall, like, any of these little islands there, there was just kind of like a, a, a land connection that was it. There wasn't, like, a spit and three or four islands, and it's like, this is wrong. Um, the Arabat part of the name comes from the Arabat Fortress, a 17th century Turkish fort at the southern end of the spit. Arabat derives from the either Arabic Rabat, meaning military post, or Arabic Rabat, meaning suburb. Okay, so you know I had to click on the Arabat Fortress, and you know why I had to click on it. Because I had my suspicions, and then when I saw this little image, I had more suspicions. And then when I saw this little pointy thing, I had more suspicions about what this thing is. Um, I don't think it's quite come into reality yet, but here is the outline of it. Now these little pointies, can we get smaller? Yeah. So here, I feel like... This is a star fort, like, growing. There's very little info on it. It's kind of a weird shape. In fact, those points I saw could only maybe be these ones because I did see these really sharp points in, in some of the images. Um, oh, I think that that is developing. 
seriously. All right, can we go away and then have it go back to the other thing? Go back. Where did it go? It's giving me trouble. Okay, so basically we have a uh, almost star fort on the Arabat spit and the Arabat spit uh, showed up this week. How come I can't scroll this at all? We got some problems going on here. Let me try reloading it. There we go. After Crimea became part of Russia, the fortress was abandoned, but was later refurbished and used by Russians during the Crimean War of 1853 to defend the Crimean coast. All right, this is ancient. They, they don't have much history past 20, 1920. Google Earth satellite imagery shows the fort has been occupied by military forces since the annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation in 2014. Okay, so this image was interesting too because it really looks like a star fort on these images. Okay, so let's go back to the Arabat spit. The top, okay, so now I'm like, well, what is this thing? The spit is low and straight on the Azov side, whereas its Sivash side is more convoluted. It contains two areas which are four to five miles wide and have brown clay hills. The top layers of the other parts of the spit are formed by sand and shells. Now, somewhere in there, they said the spit was wild. Yeah, here it is. The Arabat arrow was wild until 1835. So then I'm like, okay, that means it was natural. This weird thing is natural now is the story. Um, I wonder if it's going to get bigger. It's really thin right now. But, I mean, it just showed up for me, so I don't know. During the deportation of the Crimean Taters, which are the Tartars... So now we have the Tartaria story wrapped in. Most of the taters were forcibly transported from Crimea to Central Asia in freight wagons. The Soviet authorities tried to drown the Crimean taters from the Arabat spit in the sea on a barge, and those who tried to swim ashore were shot. Nowadays, the spit is a health resort, and its Azov seaside is used as a beach. Like this whole sentence, these whole couple sentences are just extra creepy. Well, we killed a million taters and now it's a health resort. I swear that thing wasn't even there before. While the spit is geographically part of Crimean Peninsula, politically its northern half belongs to Kurzon Oblast, Ukraine, while its southern portion is de facto since 2014 a part of the Russian Republic of Crimea. The entirety of the spit was occupied during annexation, although Russia withdrew its forces from the northern Kurzon side in December 2014. The entire spit has been back under Russian control since 25th of February 2022, following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The enemy heard about the Arabat spit being taken over by Ukraine or being by Russia because I sure don't remember how oh, they, they got the Arabat spit. Vladimir Saldo, head of Russian occupation authorities, stated that a new city would be planned on the spit. He already <laughs> planned on the spit. <laughs> it does look like a spit, doesn't it? Like a spit train? Uh... Rural communities of Heni, Cheska, Herka, and Shlazlev, Sev, Shlazlev, Sev, that's not too bad. Strilkov are located on the north section of the spit, blah, blah, blah. Popular place for summer vacation among Ukrainians, or was. Um, anyway, crazy town. So here's some more pictures of the spit. I have it out here. This is the spit. 
which is totally natural now, apparently. Um, there's even much of a road on there. So I thought there would be like a road or something, but it doesn't really look like there's much of one. I mean, I mean, they must get down there somehow, but. So one of the things was Bill was remembering the Russian invasion of Crimea and it's like, well, how did they get there now? Because if you look at it, um, this area here, it doesn't look like there's a route. Like, I don't see a bridge or anything here. So this is the Russian end, and this is the Crimean end. How did Russia get over here? So I remember the story before was like one of the reasons that Russia was really upset with Ukraine was because Ukraine cut off the water supply to Crimea, and then they had a lot of trouble getting water over there. But there was a bridge, so they would have to like bring it on the bridge or something like they'd have to carry the water over but this is a big area to be just like everything had to go across this bridge like everything right because it was blocked off on this side but now like there's no bridge over here so how did they get over here so you know originally way back this whole area would have been russian like way back so i would i had assumed at the time that the bridge was left over from those days and um and then the Russians just use it again. But now that I think about it, I'm like, why didn't Crimea or Ukraine just blow up that bridge or something? But I did not think of it back then. But there's no bridge now. So if you remember them with tanks, and I'm really not sure on this, but Bill was quite positive. He remembered they had tanks. Well, how would they get them over there? So I looked on the, the wiki Crimea invasion, and <laughs> so they just say, like, Russian special forces showed up in Crimea and, and like took over buildings. And that's all they said. And they actually said that they were known as, that they, that they were masked and it's 2014, remember, and that they were known as little green men, little green men, because we don't have enough UFO theme. Um, little green men showed up in Crimea <laughs> and we're occupying the Crimean Parliament building. Blah blah blah. So there's I read this whole thing and there's nothing about how they got there. Like did they come in on ships? I mean if there's so many of these people then how did they like didn't somebody notice like a uh, a Russian ship docked and a whole bunch of little green men came off of it? Um but no, there I didn't find anything about that. There was a little bit of things about how some there was some Ukrainian Navy uh, you know being hassled by some Russian Navy but um, it just seems kind of interesting so Russia what just landed some men and took over all of Crimea apparently now is the story because there's no I can't find any evidence of a, of a bridge here see like right there there's a circle with nothing in it, and I don't speak Russian, so I can't see what that says, but how did they get there? Explain to me. Yeah, O.J. Simpson died. Yep. There was a weird joke going around Twitter that about O.J. Simpson, like, right before he died, too. Everything is, like, a coincidence nowadays. Bananas, okay, bananas. I'm glad you reminded me. I'm glad you reminded me. I'm so glad you reminded me. Okay, the bananas. Thank you for reminding me because we were discussing this on like right before the show um, that Bill had seen somebody say bananas to don't taste right. So some somebody like, bought bananas in the house and I oinked one and I was eating it and I, I'm like, this is something wrong with this banana. It's all like rubbery and it didn't have that much flavor. Like it wasn't hideous, but it was sort of, but it had a weird texture and not a lot of flavor. And I was like, ah, and so Bill said that I'm like, that's right. That happened to me. And I, I was like, are these weird bananas? But as far as I could tell, they were just like ordinary Chiquita bananas. So we got on the discussion and I'm like, maybe it's that new appeal 
Bill Gates co- covering stuff on that. I, I had this on the show a while ago. It's I think it's called A-P-E-A-L. A-P-E-A-L, yeah. And it's um to preserve fruits. And so I looked up, and they do have an appeal version for bananas. So I'm really, and they were talking about using them on bananas. So I'm really wondering if that's what it is that they put appeal on the bananas. Either the bananas are creepy now, or he put appeal on them, or they are. And so they would be much older, but somehow inhibited from like going rotten, right? They would last longer. So it it makes sense for them to use it on, on bananas because they don't last really long, but um, let's see better photos. I don't even know what we're looking at. Leonardo da Vinci's French castle DNA DNA. What? So what he built? He designed a whole castle. Did he really? They brought an end to Leonardo da Vinci's three years spent living in a suite of rooms in the Vatican, courtesy of his wealthy patron. Da Vinci left Italy forever and moved to France, where he spent the final three years of his life. Okay, so he didn't build that whole thing, though. Oh, but this does look like it's getting Starfort flavor, doesn't it? With these edges. Not quite, not quite there, but it's starting to work on it. Huh. I don't, I've never seen this castle before, so I don't know. It, it doesn't look like he built it, though, because he was only there three years. And his shirt is all dirty. Let's see. Is his shirt all dirty? Uh, oh, yeah, it does look like it's kind of dirty. Uh, yeah, I don't remember dirt, but it's kind of subtle. I don't. I can't swear I would have seen it. Yeah, so anyway, I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, red pandas are getting darker. I've had that one on. So, yeah, I don't know uh, bananas. I don't they feel kind of... So, I actually, after I had noticed it, I had actually seen some comment on the bananas. I was trying to find out if bananas had a peel on them, and I couldn't really find a decisive answer, though. But it looks like they're using it on a lot of fruits now and they do have one for bananas and apparently they don't have to like even if it's organic they can use a peel because it's supposed to not I don't know how that works but somehow there, there's no testing on it but it's organic already uh, so that might be what's wrong with bananas that they suck now that's one of the reasons that I was thinking oh I need cold weather bananas so I could grow my own so Crimea is, no, Crimea's got that weird spit, the Arab something spit, and the spit has a star for it on it. Yeah, that's the deal. I'm getting near revelations about the real history. I don't know, because, like, we were saying that eight years ago, and um, everybody's like, we've begun the tribulations, and seven more years, and we'll be, you know, whatever. And now it's been eight years, and we ain't there. And now people are like, oh, we're starting the tribulations. I'm like, no, we started those seven years ago, according to everybody. <laughs> I know, I'm not going to go all into the Jewish hats thing, but yes, uh it's, and also the bee feeder hats in the UK are like way more extreme than I remember them. Have you heard of the green? So two green children were found and they said they came from underground and they, one of them died and they didn't like the food of here and they spoke a foreign language. Um, I think that's the one, right? Yeah, the green children of Woolpit. Rubbery bananas. This might be the one I saw because I did see it on Twitter. This may be it. It's it in half. It gets very. Yeah, I think this is the one I saw. 
Yeah, they were just weird. It wasn't quite as bad as this, but I'm thinking maybe they're just old and meh, but somehow they didn't go bad. So, you know, they're not hideous. If I grew up now eating those, I would never know any better, which is kind of scary because I just wonder, like, they just change all the bananas and can we get some that aren't all creepy and rubbery? Yeah, that's the... Ch so the Children of Woolpit, that's a pretty old story for me. Like, I heard of it maybe six or seven years ago. I mean, that's within the Mandela times when I knew of them, but... Nicola Tessa now died in his 80s and relatively well off. Oh, okay. So, first for me, he died when he was young and then he was poor. And then he died when he was old and he was poor. So if he died when he's old and he is well off, that's, I guess, an improvement. <laughs> Everything's different now, everything. It's making me crazy. And they can't even make up their mind. Just, like, pick one. Tesla died when? Uh, maybe I should just do, yeah. Let's just do Nikola Tesla. Spelling has changed. He looks a little smug now, doesn't he? <laughs> Early years. Moving to the United States. We're noticing the Paris installation. Tessa Electric Light and Manufacturing. X-ray. Oh, he did X-rays now. He's done like everything now. He's going to be like the alien from outer space who showed us how to do everything. Radio, moat control. Like every time I look, he's done more stuff. What the, was he? Ugh. I'm not even sure if I even remember him in the United States. That's not one I would swear to, but I thought he was in Europe the whole time. Bladeless turbines. There's so many things now. Other awards. I don't remember all that. Birthday press. Death. 81 after midnight, Tesla left the hotel making his regular commute to the cathedral to feed the pigeons. While crossing a street, Tesla was struck by a moving taxi cab and was thrown to the ground. No, he just like died in his hotel room like he was just old and and sickly and he died his back was severely wrenched and three of his ribs were broken in the accident tessa refused to consult the doctor in almost lifelong custom and never fully recovered that was 37 okay so he did live to 43 at the age of 86 i think that's even longer because i think 81 was when he died before Tesla died alone in room 3327 of the Hotel New Yorker. That That is, I think, what it was last time. Two days later, the Federal Bureau of S Investigation ordered the alien property custodian to seize Tesla's belongings. The alien property, the alien property custodian was an office within the government serving as custodian of property that belonged to U.S. enemies. It just happened to be called the Alien Property Custodian. 1952, Tesla's entire state was shipped to Belgrade in 80 trunks. All right, it didn't say like what his... Um, condition was though i guess if he's staying in a hotel he couldn't be too poor but i didn't find that i'm it, it'll take a lot of hunting too many ribs in this up yes they were bigger the ribs they were bigger there were fewer of them they were round they weren't shaped like linguine um and then they just ended like fingers in the front for me there was not that middle manubrium that we now have that was a long time ago 
Alien pro- I know, I was making a joke about aliens, and then, see, that's how this week has been. It's like, I make a joke, and then there it is. I pick a video, and 444 is the number of minutes. Ah, Tesla accident with taxi is back in. He died there. Oh, this is crazy because I remember him just dying destitute and sad and sickly and old and miserable up in his room. I don't remember anything about getting hit by a taxi. So he sort of still did that now. But I thought, I don't remember him making it to 86, though. I thought it was more like 81. Rumor has it that Tesla was from Venus. I don't even know anymore. Came here to show us all the good stuff, but nobody wanted to listen. <laughs> Look, I didn't even finish my stuff. I mean, is there anything left here? Not that. I got a lot of them. <laughs> got that one. All right, I only two of them. And I have like a whole bunch more comments and I have a whole bunch saved. I have a whole, whole bunch saved on uh, Reddit. So, yeah, the rumor, the um, rumors, the Mandela's have been fast and furious. Yeah, I don't know. The synchronicities are reaching another level. It's really gotten to the point where, like, there you go again. Of course. Everything is getting so shifty. I mean, like, how far is this thing going to go? Yeah, I kind of do, but you know what? I'm like my assistant. She had eye surgery because she had cataracts. And the way they do that is they take out one cataract because they don't want to risk both eyes. So they just do one, and then you totally recover that, and you're not supposed to work for 10 days. And then after that one, if everything goes well, then they have another one scheduled a few weeks later. Then they take the other one out, and um, they put, you know, artificial lens in there. And then... Um, then another 10-day recovery. Plus, she wasn't feeling good before those surgeries, and she had some weird colon thing where stuff wasn't moving, and then they were afraid it was cancer, but then apparently it was nothing. And they, and uh, so she missed that, and then she missed for the first cataract, and now she's out for the second cataract. I'm like, oh, I've been doing a lot of work lately. <laughs> I'm really hoping she'll get back soon. I, she's not a lazy person, so... The other issue is after you get back, your vision's not that good. And you have to be able to see in order to do work. You, you know, you can't be like going, what does it say? So just to be able to read the screen and stuff. So I'm hoping that she'll be back. And I know she'll come back as soon as she can. But I'm like, oh, I'm so overworked. And uh, so there's no way I can do another show. And the other thing really is, though, that like even though I'm just sitting here yapping away for two hours, I don't know if it's the concentration or what, but I am actually pretty tired at the end of the show. So uh, unless I like don't have to work so hard anymore, it'd be pretty hard for me to do another show. Like if I just didn't have any work besides the shows and and like living, then it wouldn't be too bad. But then I could just do my show and then just zone out afterwards. But running these shows is a lot of work. There's a lot of like preparation and I'm not even like a high end show. I can only imagine how much work being like these influencers put in. It's surprising how much fiddle fouling around it really takes, especially with the hours being five minutes long, like they are now. So anyway, yes, thank you all for coming. Thank you for all the Mandela's very much appreciate it. You know the drill, everybody think good thoughts. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.